Hello, I'm Pastor Steve Hulke from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Stevens Point, and welcome to our online worship for this March 28th and 29th, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Uh, for the health and protection of our members and friends here at St. Paul, our church building is currently closed until further notice, and all activities and all worship services have been suspended at this time. Of course, you can always view online here at our website or on our Facebook page uh, to, to see our worship services, or also we have a new opportunity to stream an audio to your telephone. All you need to do is simply call 877-234-5051, and you will receive the audio of the worship service and can listen at, at home. If you know someone that does not have a computer, uh, share that information with them, please, and that will enable them to connect and, and worship with us as well. Also, we want to take this time during this very difficult time to remind our members to continue to support the ministry here at St. Paul with your regular offerings. Uh, you can do so by mailing them into the church, 1919 Wyatt Avenue, Stevens Point. We are also very close to providing an online opportunity uh, to give that offering. Uh, please go to our website, check that out. Uh, that'll be coming on very soon. So please uh, check that and you can give right there online uh, to the ministry here at St. Paul. Of course, regularly check our website www.stpaulequips.com for any updated information that would be coming. And so please check that out regularly. Uh, we miss you. We love you folks. And, and we just pray God's blessing to you. We pray all is well for you uh, during these days. And we, we just ask that you would continue to, to watch online and, and join together as a family of God here as we worship our God who has given us all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord, O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. We come before our Lord, confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness. The Apostle Paul has called us to live life through the Spirit, not according to the flesh. We confess we have not put to death the things of the flesh and have sinned against you by what we have done and left undone. And we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord will open the graves and put his spirit within his people, and they shall live. God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and through his death and resurrection brought life and immortality to light. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in whom is life now and forever, through your Son's suffering and death, you have given us victory over all we ever need, fear in sin 
eternal death, and the power of the devil. Breathe into our bones and our souls your life-giving word that we rejoice in your forgiveness and serve you and others in love and faithfulness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh 
but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our verse, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die." Yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time we'll have our children's message.
one. Hey guys, uh, today we're going to do a little bit something different for children's message. Obviously, we're not in church, so we're going to start out with an experiment. Today we read, that in one of the readings, we learned that uh, Jesus called out to Lazarus and Lazarus came out from a tomb. Now, my kids are upstairs playing right now. What do you think is going to happen when I call them? Let's find out. Eli, Abby, Naomi, come on down. Come on down, have a seat. Thanks for coming down, guys. So, when I called you guys, why did you come? Because I called you. Because you wanted us. Okay. And because we should listen to you. Why? Because we could get in trouble. Oh, because you could get in trouble? Is it because you think it might be because I'm your dad? Yeah. yeah. What do you think if you were outside playing and some stranger called and said, Eli, Abby, come over here, would you go? No, right? Because they're not your parent. They don't have authority over you to say, come here, right? Well, today in our reading, we learned that Lazarus, we learned about Lazarus. What happened to Lazarus? He died. He died. And then someone called him, Abby, someone called him to come out of somewhere. Do you remember where he had to come out of? Died. Died, so he had to come out of where? A tomb. A tomb, right? Now, who called Lazarus? Jesus. Jesus called Lazarus. And did Lazarus come out? Yeah, Lazarus came out and no one thought he could do it. Well, just like you listen to me and mom when we call you because we have authority to call you, right? Death had to listen to Jesus because Jesus had come to overcome death. So just like you come and have to listen to us, Death has to listen to Jesus. Now that's really good news because, okay, and that's really good news because we don't have to fear dying anymore. So when someone dies, we don't have to worry about it because we know Jesus on the cross overcame death. Isn't that good news? Yes. Can you guys pray with me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, to you, dear friends in Christ, what a great joy it is to have you join us, whether it's through the telephone opportunity or Facebook or YouTube, where two or three gather in his name. There he is with them. As we consider our text today, we take the words of Jesus from St. John chapter 11, verse 43. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. This is our text. Lazarus, stay put. These are not the words of Jesus, the Lord of life. These are the words of sin and death and darkness. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch newspaper ran a cartoon one time that played off of GPS technology. If you have GPS, it is a wonderful thing. You know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't have GPS, it stands for Global Positioning System. And what it is, it's a technology that uses satellites that orbit the Earth, and those satellites send signal to your iPad, your phone, or your device in your car, giving you instruction about where to go and how to get to your destination. Well, this cartoon had a small little box, and in that box, there was this saying. It said, the inevitable navigation system. And as the cartoon laid out the picture with these words, it had a picture of a cemetery with a number of headstones and a freshly dug grave. 
And in that freshly dug grave was a car that had driven into the grave with these words right by the car. The words coming from the car's navigation GPS system were these words. You have arrived at your destination. Well, nothing like a little humor to talk about the serious problem of death. Death. What a sobering thought. Death of a child, death of a parent, death of a spouse, death and the end of life. It's not our primary topic of conversation as we gather around the breakfast table this morning, as we sit on the couch and think about our life together. Death is not on our minds. It is the farthest thing from our thoughts. No one likes to think about death. If you're a child, you don't like to think about death for your parents. If you're a parent, you don't like to think about death of any of your children. If you're a child, you don't like to think about the death of a grandparent, death. On Ash Wednesday, when we still had the privilege of being face to face here in this space, person to person, you were able to receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead or upon your hand to remind you that dust you are and to dust you shall return. The mark of sin, the mark of Christ, Thanks be to God. Death is a sobering thought. Death is an enemy. It is an intruder into God's good and perfect creation. As we hear about the talk of death in these dark and latter days, I'm reminded of St. Paul's words in Romans chapter 7, verse 24. St. Paul writes, Who will deliver me from this body of death? Well, when we consider our gospel lesson for this day, Jesus' encounter with death in John chapter 11, we are comforted. That despite the attempts of Jesus to reach Lazarus, death occurs to Lazarus. Lazarus dies. In the midst of situations that are beyond our control, we are reminded in today's gospel lesson that God is in control. God has things figured out, and God will take care of things in his time. What a comforting thought for us today, not only as we ponder death, death around us, death from a pandemic, death to Lazarus as Mary and Martha grieve over the loss of their brother, we are reminded that God is indeed in control. Who has not considered a time in their life when they have wondered, where are you, God? Why are you allowing this to happen to me? For surely this had to have been on the mind of Mary and Martha. Where are you, Jesus? They sent him a message. They tried to get a hold of him. They were wanting him to come and be with them because they knew that this Jesus had control over death. God, where were you when you can fill in the blank? You've had that moment, haven't you? You've had that thought cross your mind. Where were you, God, when my mom was sick? When the car accident happened? When the divorce occurred? Where were you? We try to take control of the situation, don't we? Not only when death happens in life, but when sin takes a hold of us, we wonder, where do we turn? We can't turn to God, can we? He will not show up. When death strikes, where is Jesus? Well, Mary and Martha found themselves in these shoes, wondering, Lord, where are you? For in fact, in verse 21, they say, Lord, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. You could say Lazarus arrived at his destination, for he had been there four days. They were concerned about Jesus opening the tomb, Jesus wanting to go in my Lazarus. There was no going back now, for the grave is where sinners end up. Where was God when Lazarus died? 
You see, this question tries to peer behind the mask of God, to know things that we were not meant to know, to try to figure God out when it seems like God is on our back. Looking behind the mask of God doesn't leave us much comfort because that's not where he reveals himself to us. God doesn't always allow us to know why certain things happen. He doesn't always permit us to understand his divine and sovereign will in the face of all things that take place in our life. God, where were you when? Well, Jesus wasn't the reason Lazarus died. It wasn't Jesus' fault Lazarus died. It isn't God's fault that calamity and natural disaster take place in our world today. It isn't our fault. It isn't God's fault when things occur that are beyond our control. No, these things happen as a result of sin. This world is broken and it longs for restoration. The scriptures make it pretty clear. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, St. Paul writes, for as in Adam, all die. St. Paul tells us that because we are of the line of Adam, the first Adam, because our parents are traced back to Adam and Eve, we all die. The first sin of our first parents is the inevitable navigation system for us. We are of Adam and Eve's line. And ever since then, the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh have been working against us, working against God. These evil three are at enmity with God, for we are spiritually blind dead and enemies of God in our own nature. We are apart from him and his saving work in Christ Jesus. You want to answer the question, why did Lazarus die? Well, the simple answer is, Lazarus sinned. You sin, you die. Death, it puts us in our place. It reminds us of our mortality and our need for a savior. So we confess in the creed certain things about death. In the creed, we confess, I believe that there is a resurrection of the dead. In the creed, we confess, I believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. For you and me as followers of Christ, we believe there is life in the midst of death. This world that believes you live, you pay taxes, you die, and that's it. But not for the believer. Not for you and for me. For followers of Jesus Christ, there is a greater design, a bigger picture, a future promise on the horizon for the people of God. In Christ, there is new life. This isn't new life, just one day, someday, but dear friend, there is life today. New life, right now, because of Jesus. We are comforted in God's word that all those who have been baptized into Christ Jesus has been baptized into his death. We've been ba baptized into Jesus' death and into his resurrection. Newness today, not someday, one day, but you have newness in Christ right now. And God has clothed you in his righteousness, which covers all of your sins, and you serve him right now. What a joyful reminder, what a joyful hope that as a baptized child of God, you are brought into the life of the one who has authority over death. Jesus Christ, friend of sinners, enemy of death because he destroys the power of death by his death. In him was life and that life is the light of all men. John writes in his gospel that Jesus is life and he is light. And dear friends in Christ, he brings you that life today. What a comfort for us 
What a hope in the midst of all of this talk of death that there is one who stands behind death bringing life. As a pastor, I have the opportunity and privilege of journeying with people through all the ups and downs of their lives. And one of the joy-filled struggles of pastoral ministry is that of funeral. Funerals are not easy because death takes away what is familiar to us. Death robs us of opportunities with loved ones. Death takes away those we love. The sting of sin is death. But as pastors, we wish we could bring back that loved one. We wish we could say the magic words and they would just be here again. But there are no superhero powers in pastors' words. All we have is the hope of Jesus. All we have is the hope of the resurrection. There is no plan B. Jesus is our bread and butter. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is all we have to stand on. It's all Mary and Martha had. It's all you and I have to stand on. It's all the sorrowing sisters had going for them. Jesus, the one who brings life in the midst of death. God wants you to know this day that you are his beloved child. And that one day, someday, we will all arrive at our destination. And there behind death stands the Lord Jesus, the Savior who has power over death. And one day, someday, Jesus will, by his life-giving voice, call you from the grave and give to you eternal life. This is the life you live in each and every day. It's the hope you have in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to close by sharing with you a prayer that I've been praying ever since I was a little boy, as far as I can remember, since maybe I was five or six years old. And with very few exceptions, I pray this prayer every single night. The prayer goes like this. Now they lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. If I should live for other days, I pray the Lord to guide my ways. God bless everybody, amen. That's my prayer. The reminder that whether I live or whether I die, I'm in the Lord's hands. And dear friends, you are too. No matter what tragedy confronts you, you are in Christ's victorious hands. His nail-pierced hands, his riven side reminds you that you are his and he is yours now and forever. Lazarus, stay put. <laughs> no, no, no. Lazarus, come out. Those are words of hope for not only Lazarus, but for you. On that day, by the life-giving voice of Jesus, you too will rise from death. You too will arise to new life to serve Jesus forever in his kingdom. May that comfort you this day. May that give you the hope and peace you need as you put your trust in him now and always rest in that love and that peace, dear friends, for Christ is for you now and always. Amen. And now may that peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts, your lives, and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The resurrection to eternal life has come to the world in Christ Jesus. Let us pray for the deliverance of all who belong to Christ by faith and all for whom he died and rose again. O God, as you created everything out of nothing by your mighty word, so you have brought resurrection and eternal life to light by the mighty command of your Son, Jesus, who went through death and emerged victorious over death. 
Receive our praise and thanks for your gift of eternal life. Help us to live as your resurrection people, bringing the might of your word to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Lenten season soon transitions to Holy Week, help us to continue to recognize our sin, our need for repentance, and our dependence on our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those who mourn and carry grief and sorrow in the loss of loved ones. Help us learn from our Savior at Lazarus' tomb that death is not the last word of this life, that we rejoice in your promises made, fulfilled, and yet to come of the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Enable and equip us to be heralds of the hope that is ours and witness to Christ and the power of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who are sick or infirm, disabled or troubled, especially those who are battling the coronavirus. Breathe your life-giving spirit into all in need, that hope, comfort, and peace in you may be theirs. Remind us that our ultimate healing is in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.